All right, everyone. Just before we get uh, moving and going on with the with the second part of this uh, camp meeting, you know, we want to introduce some projects to you. Uh, just wanted to let you know some little bit of an overall picture and a little bit of an overall view. Like I said, you know, Canada Word of Faith Ministries. We believe it's our assignment. It is our our assignment uh, to start or plant, establish, help grow local churches to become strong in the word and strong in the spirit. Amen. And so uh, this year we had the opportunity to become involved in different parts already. Uh, you know, we are working with a pastor who is not able to make it this camp meeting, but he is in Whitehorse, Yukon. I believe that's an important center for the Yukon at least. Uh, you know, so it's no longer just a place to go fishing. Now, you, you know, <laughs> there's the gospel is going to go out there as well. So we'll give you, you know, when the time comes, I'll give you a little bit more of an update on them. So we'd like to become involved fin financially and perhaps send a team or whatever needs to be done up in that area. So that's one of the areas then without mentioning any towns at this moment or any cities at this moment, uh, but in our own province. Uh, we have a few op opportunities as well to start a new church with a with a Bible school attached to it. It's a little bit different Bible school, you know, than you may have heard or may have been used to. And we're making some changes in Red Deer as well with our timing. You know, it used to be Monday through Friday from 9 till 12. You know, we do have to adapt it a bit in order to draw, you know, in order to market it a little bit different because people... You know, their schedules change, it seems like. Life changes, right? Uh, you know, so you can't do things like you used to do back in the, in the 90s or back in the, in, in, in the 2000s. So we are aware, finally, of some of those things. And uh, so we want to make some changes there as well in our own Bible school. But at the same time, you know, we do want to become involved in some areas in our province with starting uh, new churches and new Bible schools as well. So there's a bit of an, an overall picture, you know, of what we are about to do. And uh, so when you are giving to Canada Word of Faith, you know, you're not just giving to camp meeting only, just to uh, make sure that the honorariums and everything else is taken care of, although that would be the major part for this week. But at the same time, we want to, you know, cast a vision for a little bit further ahead as well of what we want to do. Now, having said that, you know, I believe it's very good for me to give you an update of what we have done. Right last uh, last year, uh, you know, we raised some funds uh, for Quebec, uh, Quebec at that time. I said yesterday, last night, I said five thousand. I don't think it was five thousand, but you know, whatever it was, doesn't matter. You know, we just raised some funds, and we've been sowing that into their province, into your province. Amen. Also, we sowed some money towards Iceland as well. And I think it's good for me to give you an update there because I went there last fall with the intent of starting a school and in, with the intent of starting a church. And, um, you know, only to find out, my goodness, this is, this is, a, this is new, new, new territory. Right? I mean, it's not the easiest place to be in because, uh, you know, there's a lot of advertising that had gone, gone out. And uh, every single pastor, you know, did not want the people that we were working with, they did not want them to start a brand new church with this word of faith stuff. So, um, you know, obviously we did not get the support from anybody, from any pastor. But the good news is, you know, we did an interview on, on, on television uh, and, you know, actually two separate ones. And, you know, we did get a, you know, a, a pretty good uh, re response back from there. So uh, coming, coming back, you know, that's, that's the route that we need to, need to go. It's a bit difficult at this moment. Just to, just to go in and start a church or start a Bible school, you know, so one of the best ways that we can do it is go in there with, uh, you know, with a probably six months to 12 months of uh, TV work, you know, be, before attempting to even start a church or a school, you know, the way that we want to accomplish this. So we have to backtrack a little bit uh, and go at it from a, from a little different angle, which is okay. You know, we just keep working at it, you know, till we, till we get it right. Everything we're doing, you know, sometimes you have to be, uh, prior to planting, you sometimes got to plow. 
All right, and that country definitely is a very secular country with lots of Lutheran and Viking roots. Anybody from Iceland or Icelandic background? No? Well, let me tell you, uh, they really like Leif Erikson. <laughs> He's the first guy that was sent from Iceland to this part of the world. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, you know, like it's not, the, it, to be honest, it was not the easiest place just, just to go to and get people interested in what you're doing. They, they really did not want us there at all. So that does not stop us. So we just go at it from a different angle. In the meantime, the people that we're working with, you know, they are also, you know, working towards getting, uh, you know, to, to become uh, graduates from our Bible school. They take it with, uh, via video at, at this moment. So that's not a bad thing. I think it's very important for them to become trained as well so they can uh, handle the people that they're going to work with. And not, and not only, only that, it just helps them. Uh, if they get some papers, it just helps them to get some confidence, right, in order to do what they, what they are doing. Because at this moment, you know, nobody's really looking at them as leaders necessarily or as pastors. So I believe it would be good for them, you know, to get some, uh, you know, to, to get some training and get some papers under their belt just from a natural point of view that they... Uh, you know, get the, get the confidence that they can say, okay, you know, we've graduated from a Bible school. Amen. It's just really simple, right? How I many of you know it's not always spiritual? Sometimes you've got to just do the natural in order to get further ahead. Amen. And so that's, that's the part of Iceland. So we'll be working with them, you know, till they get to the place. And even if it, if, if, if it takes five years, you know, that's what I told them, you know, because they were afraid that we would drop them. I said, no, no, we're not dropping you. I mean, I am in this for five, for, for five years. If you don't have anything going after five years, yeah, then we're going to drop you. But <laughs> if they come up now too. Okay, okay. <laughs> We we we're, we're doing this with the two of us. You you know that, right? She, you know, Ingrid does not always correct me. You know, most of the time she actually just adds to me. But in this case, she had to correct me. Praise the Lord. Anyway, no problem. <laughs> we, would you like to say anything? Okay. Amen. Okay. So, Louis and uh, Brian, why, Brian, why don't you come up first? I'll give you the mic. And Brian. Hails from North Dakota, but uh, felt the call to come to Quebec. Is that right? I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how you wound up there, so I'm going to have to let you do all the talking and explain yourself. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Pastor John. It's really an honor to be here, and thanks for the opportunity to share the, the vision of what Pastor John has mentioned. And a little bit about me. Uh, my, my wife is Susie. You can put the first slide up. Hopefully the resolution is okay. Uh, it's a little bit off. That didn't look like that on my computer, but you get the idea. And that's my beautiful wife, Susie Paulus. Some of you probably know her. She, was, she went to Canada Word of Faith Bible Training Center, got a good Bible school education here. She went to Damata. I went to both Rama and Damata in the States, got a good Bible school education, said yes to God, said whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Send me someplace tough. Little did I know that it was going to be the country just north of where I grew up. But Quebec is a mission field with over, I think, 90, in the, in the province, I think Quebec is 96, 97% Catholic. And you're looking at about 1% actual born-again believers in, in the province of Quebec. So I lived in Thailand for five months, helping a missionary there. The stats are about the same. Half a percent practicing Christians in Thailand, 1% practicing Christians in Quebec. So we're looking at the darkest place in North America. Go ahead, send me Lord. Here I am. I'm willing to go. And so, so for three years, we were in Sherbrooke, Quebec. We were helping at a church there, and that was a good time. And then a, about a year and a half ago, God called us to start our own ministry and to move to another city. And so we just looked at a map of Quebec. We knew it was supposed to be Quebec, and we said, all right, Lord, where, where do we go? So the name Three Rivers Quebec just came up on the map. We're like, well, sounds good. It means... It means water, you know, the flow of the, flow of the Spirit. There's, not, there's nobody there that we know. My wife grew up in Quebec, had never been to the city. So we go to the city, and uh, we drive there, cross the bridge, beautiful city. We love it. All right, this is where God called us to be. We just had a peace inside that, all right, this is where we're supposed to be. So last year, we started doing different things. We did healing meetings and just different outreaches, just 
in, in the call of God, you don't always know right away what exactly you're supposed to do. So we just tried different stuff that we'd always wanted to do. We did healing meetings. We did Easter outreaches. We did kids' festivals. And, you know, God blessed it to a point, but we couldn't keep that up all the time. And so, so we, we reached quite a few people with the healing meetings, and it was really good. We had some great testimonies. And so this year we were praying, all right, God, what do you want us to do? We don't just want to do meetings to do meetings. We don't just want to do something to do something. And if our supporters don't like it, well, too bad for them. Bye-bye. God will bring up new ones. I mean, that's, that's our attitude, not to be disrespectful, but just, all right, we're not just going to do something to do something. Because we realized with the healing meetings that it was the first time that they'd heard a message like that, that God wants you well, that God wants you prosperous. We were preaching the gospel to them, and they grew up Catholic, and so they grew up with the idea that I have to do something to earn something. Even once they get become born again, they, they, they're under the assumption that I have to do something to earn something. How many of you know that Jesus already did it all for all of us? We don't have to earn it anymore. It's not our job to earn anything from God. But they don't know that. And so, so every time at the healing meeting, we do it twice a month. And, it's, and here's an illustration. You know, if you have a 10-year-old computer that you've never taken any files off from, but it's just gotten loaded and loaded and loaded. Now, if you try and, and put another program on, like a really good program, you're not going to be able to do that until you do delete some of those files. So every time we'd come back, is like we'd delete five or six files. And then we couldn't even really add anything to these people un- because they just have so... They have no background in what we're talking about. They're just so full of junk and religion. And so, so we knew that they needed something more. And so we're praying about it. And we're like, God, what do we do? What can we do that's going to reach these people? And so God really put in our heart strongly is Immersion Bible School. And that's the name that God gave me. And it's going to be an immersion program. It's three months. And it's, it's like any other immersion program. The purpose is to learn the language of God. And it's going to be just through an immersion program because the way God gave it to me is an immersion program is the best way, proven way, to learn a language because it forces your mind to take the language. I can, exp- I can say from experience that's the truth. When I lived in Thailand, I was forced into the language. If I didn't learn the language, I wouldn't eat because I lived with Thai guys and their English was worse than my Thai. So... I was forced into learning the language, and my mind picked it up pretty quick. In fact, a lot of people said, hey, you're picking up the language really fast. I said, I have to because if I don't learn the language, I can't eat. So you won't see me long if I don't learn the language. And so this is, this is an opportunity for people to learn the language of God and to just be immersed for three months into God's word. And it's going to be so that his word will become a greater reality to them than the circumstances in their lives. Both my wife and I, it changed our lives when we went to Bible school. It, it absolutely changed our lives from doing it out of works. And I grew up in a Christian home, a good Christian home. But it was still out of works. Still, you serve God out of works. You, you read the Bible out of duty. You, you pray because you're supposed to pray. But it wasn't so much. And we still had a relationship to the point that we knew it. But we want to give people an opportunity to hear the word of God to experience God's power, God's presence, and to just get, in, get immersed in a safe place in the Word of God to get them to start speaking the language of God. And we've had, we've had a, just supernatural favor since we said yes to doing this Bible school. And I, I, I've noticed something, and I didn't really notice it until somebody said it, is when you're in God's plan, you don't have to ask for God's favor on his plan. Because his plan is already blessed. So if, if, if God tells me to go start a Bible school and I say yes, then I don't have to keep asking God for favor over and over again because his favor and his blessing is on that plan. And we've seen that since we, since we said yes. And it's been just the most amazing thing um, to see. And you can go to the next slide. We're just going to get people Im- immersed in God's word. And, and I, God gave me the vision of the Bible school, immersion Bible school. I said, yes, that's great. Let's do it. And then a few months later, I said... Lord, this is your vision. What exactly do you want? What exactly is the vision of Emergent Bible School? And he told me simply to learn the language of God. Once you start getting God's word in your mouth, once you start speaking God's word, I guarantee you, your life will change. And that's the whole purpose of this school. 
And the program is basically, the next slide is just, it's just a 12-week program. It's going to be three days a week, three hours a day. We're just going to start out like 30 minutes of prayer and confession. Just get them, just start speaking God's word right away. And then we're going to have two, two teaching sessions. And uh, then I find it really interesting that I've been in full-time ministry now for about a year and a half. God asked us to start a Bible school. We said yes. But already, without even starting the Bible school, the, we have about 150 years of ministry experience for teachers that are coming to, the, to teach at the Bible school. Pastor John is coming. I asked, I asked him a while ago, and he said yes right away. And because in this school, we also not just want them to teach. We don't just want to teach them the Word of God. We want them to experience God, and we want them to experience um, we want them to be, to be taught from ministers who know what they're talking about, who can produce what they're talking about. So I've asked Pastor John to share about the love of God. And how many of you know that Pastor John can definitely just manifest the love of God? Wherever he goes, people just know that he loves them because God loves them. It's not hard to see. And so we have teachers. We have over, I think, 150 years of ministry experience. I'm the rookie on the team with about a year and a half of full-time ministry. And... Uh, and, but God has just brought the whole thing together, and, and we're really excited about it. And, of course, we have a budget. It's not a lot. We're not charging much for the students. We're charging $150, which ends up being something like a dollar or dollar fifty per teaching hour, which is just ridiculously low. But for our first year, we want to make, a, we want to make it available to as many people as possible. We're not a ministry training school. It's not going to be something. It's not Rhema or Damata. Those are great, but I'm not supposed to be starting a Rhema or Damata. God called me to start Immersion Bible School. And so we're charging $150, and it actually includes books and, and the registration, or not the registration. Uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, they donated some books, which you see on the back. I have a little table with stuff in the back. And we have uh, room rent. We want to get... Um, we found a great place for the, for the location. It's at an elementary school. They charge us 300 bucks a month. Can't beat that. We bring all, our own equipment in. Uh, we need, but we, want, we need recording equipment because even though we haven't started the school yet, we've already had three or four informal requests to live stream or to do DVDs. And so we're already thinking about a plan for how to, how to implement that into how to live stream from day one for churches that would be interested in Quebec that they could log on live and watch, watch the, the Bible school live. And so we've, we've already had a request for that or DVDs. So we're looking at, at a 7,000 budget for speakers and for guests and for covering all the expenses of the Bible school, which is not a lot. And we're not charging a lot, but... God is, uh, God is good, and everything that we've done so far, God has just prospered because it's, it's his plan. We're not trying to, to get his, or his favor. We're not trying to say like we know it all. If you talk to Susie and I, we're thinking we have no idea how to do any of this. I mean, no idea what we're doing. But the one that has all knowledge lives inside of us. And that's why it's going to be successful, is because we put all our trust... Every bit, of, every bit of our trust in him. We're not going in there saying, okay, we've done this before and it worked. I have no idea. But I know that God lives inside of me and he has all the knowledge and he gives me and my wife whatever knowledge we need. And it's just been amazing the ideas that have come. God, we just be praying and God just gives us ideas on how to do something or what to do. And so, so thank you again, Pastor John, for letting me share the vision. And like I said, I have a little table in the back with some stuff. You can check it out. Most of it's in French. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, just, to, just to let you, let you know, you know, because we don't want you just to become involved financially with, with all these things, but uh, with all the projects that we're going to get involved in and are involved in. But we'd like to take you on one of these trips as well. You know, like if we have a mission trip to a different country or if we do an evangelistic outreach to Whitehorse, or if you want to do a youth meeting, you know, we've talked about that to Quebec, you know, then we want you guys to become involved in it. So we want to, we will, you know, keep you or your pastors at least inv or, uh, knowledgeable about some of the, 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 the opportunities that we have. And especially the, the whole missions area is just absolutely huge for us because we've got more places at this moment, you know, that, that we can go to. 
right? You know, we're, we're, we're getting so many calls and people asking from all different parts of the world now, you know, can you come with a team? And, uh, well, that's, what, that's where my heart is, right? I'd love to take a team. You know, we've done that to various missions uh, in Africa already. And, uh, you know, like to take not only, you know, workers, gospel workers, but some of the medical team. We, would like, we, we took uh, medical people with us a few years ago. And uh, it just really works, works well, you know. But you've got to be tough, <laughs> you know, with some of those things uh, in order to... Uh, work well and so anyway I don't want to get into that too much but we'll keep your pastors knowledgeable about all the things that we're doing I'd like to take uh, this opportunity to introduce to you Louis Vian and Louis is not able to give his own testimony because time will not allow it so let me give you <laughs> let me give you this the, the shortened version of that you know Louis um, Louis I think you get born again in jail yeah, okay, so that's a nice way to introduce you, isn't it, you know? He got born again in jail. And, uh, you know, it, but I was, I was really, really impressed by that because, you know, his wife, Etta, who is in Quebec, she speaks the language. She's from yeah. Alberta, yeah, she's from but Lethbridge. she's from Lethbridge, but she speaks French like a, like a Frenchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really well, like I don't hear an better accent. Than better than Better than Louis. And, uh, you know, but so what happened was, you know, Etta, uh, at the time, she was already born again, but she, you know, was healed from MMS and came out of a wheelchair. And so in order to uh, su surprise Louis, she went to visit him in jail. And, uh, and so she just wa walked in and thinking that Louis would be excited about that. Louis was not happy. I was mad. He was, he was extremely, he was fuming mad about this. Yeah. And so it took him a little while to accept the fact that she, his wife is now healed. And it took him a little while to get saved. But you did, obviously. Yeah. And, um, you know, so to make a long story short. There's a few more things. But there's a few more yeah. things. <laughs> Donna? Yeah. <laughs> there's a few more things, but. Brian, don't speak. No. <laughs> Yes. And he, here he is, you know, he went back to Quebec because that's the province of origin. And he was in Alberta for how long? 20, oh, 27, 28 years. 27, 28 years. So God called him to go back yeah. uh, in order to do what he's doing now. So I thought I should add that to it. It's nice. It's nice. I won't fun. have to say it. No, exactly. It's better that somebody uh, else says it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What Brian said, a lot of things that I wanted to say. It's a call of God. It's, it really is. There's one scripture in Ephesians. I, I just opened my Bible. I have a French one. You mind? You guys speak in tongues? Okay. It's, um, and I love that. He elect, I'm going to translate from mine, okay? He elected us in him before the foundation of the world. So I'm here. He knew about it. You want me to read it in French? Selon qu'il nous a élus en lui. Avant la fondation du monde, afin que nous soyons irrépréhensibles devant lui par l'amour. Love. Amour. Love. So, uh, I found my luggage. Well, they found it. They called me this morning. But there was a zipper open on the top. You know, we have a compartment. That's where the CD, I hope, was. It went flying. It's not here. So, but I have my sandals. <laughs> so, is Tim here, the guy with the camera? Stop here. Don't want my wife to see that. And I pray that my CD and, and the DVD is not on my desk. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have a lecture. So I have two F words I'd like to, to, to tell you. One that goes with the one that uh, this gentleman said last night. Faith is fun, but it's also a fight. I love to fight. I'm going to dance. so far it's a fight and I love to fight so going to Quebec going back to Quebec although it is my language I have a French Bible believe it or not I had to relearn everything and everything I know I've learned from watching Pastor John basically I watched him I'm out of breath I watched him I tried to imitate him except his looks he's in Quebec he's a very handsome man Pastor Ingrid that's what women say the women told me that. Did you like his message? He's so handsome. <laughs> you have an impact. You do. You impacted Quebec with your looks, but also the message. You heard that too, eh, Brian? You are handsome. So 
Anyway, I went back to Quebec. In fact, I spend more time in English than in French in my life. It doesn't show, I know, but it's, it's true. So when I went to, oh, when I went to Quebec, first of all, I had a vision in prison. Uh, it was about going to Quebec. That's 20 years ago. And it took all that time. So it is a fight. You know what I mean? It doesn't come just like that. And uh, the vision was to form people. Like, a, you say, oh, it's exciting. It's exciting, Brian. I'm so honored to be here. Last night, I left, and I went to minister to people till 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. I don't have my material, but here we are. And so we're going to start a school in Quebec because I want people to know the word of faith, which we preach. I want to be an extension of who you are What you deposited in me, like Brian, is one. So we're starting a school in, uh, I don't have the dates, September uh, 21st or, doesn't matter, but you know, and we have seven people already. Praise God. Praise God. Seven. And uh, I would like to have 25 people. And I have a DVD of the, the pastor that wants to start it with me. And uh, he's really excited about it. So am I. I. I feel it inside. It's right here right now. It's burning. It, it is burning. I've been consumed with that for oh, five years. Well, 20 years, but really five years. I talk about it all the time. I only have one message. It's always the same thing. I don't even need my notes. But it's exciting. What time is it? I don't want to take too much time, but... Uh, do you have that excitement? It's about a country. It's about a nation. It's about salvation. It's not just about a little school somewhere. It's more than that. It's big. And, uh, and we have openings in the Bay James area. It's way up north with the Cree Indians already. So that's in September also. So, and we started the church. Now, that's funny because we started the church yesterday, but I was on a plane. (laughs) So, (laughs) nothing normal. (laughs) It's lost my luggage. I'm the pastor of the church. I'm on a plane to come here, see you. So, don't you ever say, I don't love you. (laughs) (laughs) Don't go there. I love you. I'm so honored to be here. I don't have much more to say, but you know, it's exciting. to to have Pastor John coming in Quebec to help us, and many others will come. Donna, I'd like to see you in Quebec. I'll say it publicly. Is it filmed? Donna. (laughs) Pastor Sheila. Lawrence, you're welcome. I've learned so much from these people, and it was ordained before the foundation of the world. I love it, and it's in me. Now, I had to translate all that stuff. Donna alone's got about 67 pages. Thank you. It's a lot to translate. But it's not really a translation. It's more an adaptation. I cannot have your anointing, your graces, or you, or whoever, like Jeff Lowen. I can't do that. I cannot express your experience of the things you've accomplished. But I can use mine and adapt it to respond to a need. That's what we do. We have to respond to a need. Otherwise, we're just religion. So that's what we're going to do. And I know you're going to help me. I know that. I can see that. So we're on a tight budget, of course. Just like Brian, we're just starting. We're pioneering all that stuff. But we look forward. It's come from before the foundation of the world. And God supplies everything. Among the projects that we have also as a ministry, I didn't even talk about many ministry. I never do. Really, I don't have to. I'm a doer of the word. That's how Jesus got his reputation. A fame came about the guy. Reputation. So there's going to be YouTube. Now you're going to laugh at that one. I'm going to cook. That's been a dream I've had. That's part of the ministry. I'm not kidding you. I'm going to cook. 
prepare a dish in 20 minutes and in parallel with the Word of God. What you need to, to have success is what the ingredients you need, and you prepare a dish. And I found a beautiful stove. It's a, it's a Bélanger 1949. It's, uh, that thing is, oh, like two tons. It's just huge. You know the old style, round, and an old fridge? And I'm preparing a studio, and there's somebody who's going to film it with a good equipment. Not like yours, but maybe not like that. But it's good enough for now. And we'll put it on YouTube. So the word goes out. We have to reach out. We have to reach. There's something else. I wrote a book. Don't look on the table. I didn't bring anything. It's not published yet. But the Lord gave me that book. He gave me the graph. He gave me, well, the content, of course. It was in French. The title, the subtitles, the graphics. And I was going out putting my garbage in a bin. That's an important moment, isn't it? And, and boom, just like that. I can almost say I have the smell of it. That's how God works in my heart. In yours too. And so I, I wrote it. It's ready. So I'm looking for the right publisher. And I just said that we have an opening in, in the James Bay area. You can look at it on the map. It's way up north in Quebec. With the natives. With the Cree. Some Inuits. And uh, didn't even need my glasses. Thank you Lord for glasses. And so that's what we're going to do. And two schools, all that material to translate. Brian, I feel like you said, sometimes I feel that, and I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. But I don't have to. He has put something inside of me that's burning. I just have to use this anointing, this grace, and I can't help it. I can't help it. I left last night. I'm almost done, Pastor. I left last night. And people were waiting for me to hear about the Word of God. Oh, so we spent till 4 o'clock in the morning around the fire. I went to bed, got up at 7. The airport called me. They have my suitcase and all that stuff, except what I needed. <laughs> it's okay. We have the anointing. And, uh, and I'm going to say something that may be weird to you, but comfortable life is not interesting to me. I fall asleep. I like a fight. My luggage is lost, okay, let's fight it. It's okay. I blew my budget. That's okay. That's okay. I don't care one thing about it. It costs, you know, the gospel is not cheap. What Brian and I are doing, what you have been doing for 25 some years, doesn't come cheap. It comes through prayer and work. Work and not toil, but work. But it's fun, it's a fight, and the fun part of the fight is that we win. So that's all I'm gonna say. Praise the Lord! Thank you so much for giving me this time and appreciate that. I'm really excited. I could go on and on, but Amen. Just, uh, uh, just wanted to ask you really, really quick you know, I, I yeah, I'll take it back. Brian said, you know, he's gonna be in uh, Trois Rivières. Where, where, where are you gonna be? At? Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Mascouche. Uh, I had a beautiful map. If you look at it, Mascouche, if you Google it tonight, you can go. The, the, the pool of people around there, and it's a big area like uh, Brian. It's, a big, it's not a big city, but it's around Montreal. There's 270,000 people, just about. So it's a big pool to fish. It's a big pool. There's a lot of people, and they're all Catholics. Most of them in New Age and all kind of stuff. Actually, in the church yesterday, my wife told me it was pictures of yoga, you know, all kinds of stuff, because we rent a room. And I said, don't worry about it. Just use that and compare that with the Lord. They'll see the difference. Don't worry about it. You know, I've been preaching in prison. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> and there was Buddha statues and all kinds of stuff like that. Who cares? Yeah. Jesus is better. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, Mas Mascouche is a part of Montreal yeah, or somewhat like... Montreal. Yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to say, because I was with you in, in, in February, yeah. and, uh, you know, both places, you know, Trois-Rivières and Mascouche, we held pastors' meetings, and I was just so impressed with the amount of pastors who were really interested in what we had to offer. Yeah. You know, so even though you hear some things, well, everything is Catholic and it's very difficult, you know, to bring the message that may be, but there's a hunger there, right, that 
needs to be fed. I believe, you know, but, you know, like both places had something like 25 pastors coming out, you know, to these luncheons and to these whatever we had dinner meetings. And, uh, you know, just a simple message that they all really late got, a, got a hold of. So I was really pleased with that. And uh, I'm looking forward to being with you again in, the, in, the, in September. And it's, and it's going to be good. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank, you. Thank you, Louis, so much. Amen. So with that, you know, we want to take up an offering uh, this morning for Canada Word of Faith Ministries. And uh, so this is really going towards our French project. I hate to call you project, but you know what I mean with it. I already discussed it with them. I was going to make sure, hey, guys, you're not a project. But in order for me to handle this, it's just a good way for us to call it that, you know, called French Connection. Whatever you want to call it, the Quebec Project. I haven't found a name for it, but I do like... You know, some of the names you have come up with already. But for us, for our benefit, it's the French project. So we are going to sow this morning. You're going to sow this morning uh, into this part of uh, what Canada Word of Faith Ministries does. And, I, you know, it's part of our ministry to reach out into different parts of our nation. Like I said yesterday, it is a mission field, isn't it? You know, Canada itself is a mission field. Because not only do we have French-speaking people within the French-speaking part of Canada, there's a whole lot of other languages that are being spoken as well. You know, my goodness, you know, like I have, I'm, I'm always amazed by, by, by how many different nationalities that there are really in Canada. Right? I mean, I just noticed, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy with an accent. You know, mine's a little different because, you know, I picked one up because I've been talking in tongues so much. But... <laughs> <laughs> but really and truly, like if you if you go around the building here and you start listening to people, you know you'd be pretty pretty amazed by how many accents there are, even even here. We went to Sylvan Lake on Monday, on Canada Day. Man, I was amazed by how many people from different uh, nations and cultures and and uh, nationalities, different languages that we have. So, you know, you don't even have to go uh, across the ocean in order to be on the mission field. We've got a mission field right here and now. So what better place than to sow into our nation? Amen. What better place to sow into our, our nation? And uh, so I'm, I, you know, we've already purposed in our heart, you know, uh, as a church and on an, in, in a, on an individual basis what we are doing. And uh, if you need to pray about it, we'll give you a moment to pray about it. It's done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just want, you know, want, want you to give this morning. And I can say it without shame, right? Because, oh, I can shame. I, I, I can say these things without holding back because I know when you're giving, when you give generously, it's going to be given to you generously as well. And again, generously really is relative to where you are at, right? Like I'm just thinking about the uh, little, the, you know, about the widow that sowed or that planted two mites or whatever they were. And, um, you know, uh, Jesus was watching it. And I don't think this was, a, this was a word of knowledge. I think that he knew exactly what all they were giving because he's just watching it, right? He, he watched what the Pharisees gave, right? And he watched what this lady gave. And then based on what everybody had left and what he knew they had left, he was able to say this woman gave more than all of them put together, right? Because she gave all of her living. She was generous. I can guarantee she noticed that she gave. Right? That's just a lot of people, you know, they don't really give generously because they kind of gave it and they don't notice it. And so when the harvest comes, they don't notice it either. Right? Because that's how sowing works. But if you give generously, you know, or as Second Corinthians talks about it, you know, uh, you know he who sow, soweth what? Sparingly will reap also sparingly. Meaning, you know, if you kind of throw it out there, you know, if you just kind of give... And without thinking about it, you know, you kind of use, instead of sowing your seed, you're throwing your seed, right? That can happen. Uh, you know, if you're operating that way, you kind of sow sparingly. You know, you don't really notice it when it comes back to you. You won't notice it either. But if you give, what's the opposite? Bountifully or, you know, one translation does say it actually that way. If you sow generously, praise God, you'll notice it. But when your harvest comes, woo, you'll notice it as well. That's exciting then, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. So we are 
Generous sowers. Amen. Generous sowers. So if you've got an offering envelope, everybody got an offering en- envelope this morning. If you don't have one, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will do cartwheels over to your place. Just to That's how excited we are. <laughs> Amen. Anybody needs an offering envelope this morning, just raise your hand. Looks like everybody does. So uh, please, you know, go ahead, ushers, and take up the offering. Let's stand up. You need one? No. The debit machine. Where is the debit machine? Barry, where's the debit machine? It's, it's out there. Okay, that's all I know. Out by the shelf. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand, actually, for, for a moment. And, and then give. Sorry, I don't want you just to, just to sow it yet. Father God, so just ho- hold up your offering bef- before the Lord. We do the same thing. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to plant to sow, to invest, and we do this with a generous heart, with a generous offering. We thank you that these finances go into good ground, specifically in our nations, even more specifically in the province of Quebec. We thank you that every dollar that is going to be planted will produce a rich, bountiful harvest in that part of our nation. And we thank you that souls will be saved, lives will be changed, bodies will be healed, the work of Satan will be stopped, and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be demonstrated in power and in glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and sow your money. Praise God. Amen.